Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. Today we're going to talk about the Drop and Hi-Fi Men collaboration, the HER7DX closed back over ear dynamic driver headphone that comes in right at around $149. As you can see, I'm working from home today, so you have no idea whether or not I'm wearing pants. Now the HER70X, which I will refer to as the R70X from here on out, is a bit of a surprise because ordinarily I think we'd expect planar magnetic headphones from Drop and Hi-Fi Man collabs. Hi-Fi Man has of course done some moving coil dynamic driver headphone designs in the past, but they're mainly known for their planars. In any case, Drop collabs are often great value for the community. Uh, they've produced a number of awesome headphones like the HEX4, the Sennheiser HD6XX, the Focal LX, the DCA Aeon X Closed, and so I was curious to see how this one was going to turn out. Now, just before we get going here, a quick disclaimer. This unit was sent over by Drop for Valuation, but I've not been paid to say anything in particular about it, and all thoughts and opinions are my own as usual. But without further ado, let's jump in and begin by talking about the build design and comfort first. When R70X was first revealed, I think someone saw it and mentioned that it looked a little bit like a pieced together kind of headphone from a series of different headphones, uh, kind of like a Franken phone. And I can kind of see what they meant when I take a look at this. Um, you know, even though the general aesthetic design, the color scheme, uh, you know, I like the black, I like the navy blue, it's my kind of thing, you guys know me. But it's got the headband construction of the, the older Hi-Fi Man planers along with the baffle and the pads of the HE5XX, uh, otherwise also used in the Deva. And the cup design is something new entirely. I'm not sure if they've used this design before, but I haven't seen it before. I have to say that this looks and feels like they had a bunch of pieces to choose from, uh, from different headphone designs. And they tried to see what they could do based on what was already available rather than designing something from the ground up. So that's not necessarily a knock against it. It's just that it doesn't look particularly special. Additionally, with the R70X, there's also some mechanical design issues that stem from the angle of the yoke not pressing strongly enough inwards to create a sufficient clamp or seal on my head. And this will become a problem later on for the sound quality section. I'll talk about that as well. But in the meantime, um, for the comfort, this is excellent. Um, I guess that's the one benefit there of not having as much clamp force. It's very lightweight. The pads are very soft. Uh, the pads are removable as well, but they're very soft and cushiony. And they also have a very large opening here for my large elephant ears. Uh, <laughs> so that's really nice. Um, unfortunately, the build quality doesn't feel particularly great here. This does feel like cheap plastic here. There's metal uh, for the yoke, uh, which is nice, but this part doesn't feel like a particularly sturdy build. I guess this is somewhat to be expected on more budget-oriented headphones, uh, but you know, build quality does continue to be an issue for Hi-Fi Man designs, um, and as usual, time will tell. Uh, you know, on the as far as the longevity on this one is concerned. I keep wanting to call it R70X, but it's R7DX. <laughs> Even though it's a closed back design, uh, the isolation on this one isn't that great, uh, depending on the positioning and the coupling that you get, because if the seal is a little bit compromised, which is very easy to have happen with this one, uh, you will get sound leaking in and out a little bit more strongly. Speaking of things that Hi-Fi Man can improve on, they've certainly listened to the community with regards to the quality of their cables, because with this one, the cable is actually ergonomically outstanding. This is one of the better Hi-Fi Man cables that I've come across, or one of the best Hi-Fi Man cables. It's not springy, it doesn't keep its shape, it conforms you know, reasonably well. Um, the only issue with it is that it is still a little bit on the microphonic side, so when you touch it, you do tend to hear that. Now, let's talk about sound quality beginning with drivability. The R70X is a fairly low impedance and high sensitivity headphone, so it's not all that difficult to drive. You don't need a standalone amplifier or anything crazy to get this one going. But of course, I did test it off of a wide range of equipment, all the way from the THX AAA1 to the Vioelectric HPA V550, and it worked just fine. Um, it didn't really change all that much, but I didn't have any trouble either. Now, let's talk about all the objective stuff as usual. I'll throw the graphs up on the screen here for you guys, but it's important to know that there's more to sound quality than just adherence to or deviation from a target. Remember that this is a highly smoothed or you know coarse grained target, while the headphones frequency response is much more fine grained, and it should deviate in certain places, particularly in the treble. As usual, let's begin by looking at the bass, and this is bound to be the most controversial subject when it comes to evaluations of this headphone. You know, I mentioned before that there's some mechanical design issues where the yoke angle doesn't push the headphones in to clamp hard enough. Well, that's the reason why I think you may uh, see a bunch of reports coming out about this headphone lacking bass. In my case, I was able to achieve a good seal on the measurement rig, and what you're seeing here uh, with this graph is a measurement taken with a somewhat stronger clamp force um, than I think would be normal, a little bit stronger than it was on my head. When I initially put the headphone on and listened before measuring, which is something that 
you know, should be done, I found that the bass rolled off quite strongly. Um, and I was able to confirm this with in-ear microphones to test the on-head response as well. It turns out that the reason for this is that with the headband extended to the, uh, you know, optimal spot for me, which was actually, you know, fairly high up, the seal gets compromised. And so I had to slide the arms like all the way, you know, uh, down, which was less comfortable for me, um, but it did allow me to actually get the, the seal and the desired bass response. But in short, the bass level with this headphone is going to be highly dependent on the coupling. And in my case, it was much more tricky to actually achieve it than I think would be ideal. When the seal is achieved, the bass tends to be a little bit more focused towards the mid and the upper bass rather than the sub bass and this is something that gives a slightly more boomier kind of sound less thumpy um, if you know what I mean uh, but it's not massively out of whack or anything uh, I just tend to prefer the elevation to be a little bit you know uh, lower down now for the mids this is where things also get a little bit strange um, as there's a strong resonance there at around 800 to 900 Hertz causing certain instruments and vocals to sound a little bit nasally and honky ideally you want this region to be much smoother overall then there's actually some decent presence in the upper mids where the physical ear amplifies frequencies the most strongly it's not perfect here but at least there's some presence and clarity for the upper mids uh, which is nice um, and in my view essential <laughs> and for the treble the overall level is what I consider to be generally neutral but this is also where some of the more problematic features show up the 5.8k resonance you see there being elevated over the rest of the treble harmonics above it um, causes a kind of compressed sound to cymbals and percussive hits and I've called this percussion compression in the past and this is also punctuated by a strong 9k resonance giving that kind of zingy and sizzly sheen to the whole thing so it's not the most clear sounding treble as a result however to give it some credit here at very least there's some really good treble extension all the way into the upper treble so the the treble doesn't roll off or anything like that which is nice and the overall treble level there in relation to the mids and the rest of the headphone is actually pretty solid so a zoomed out analysis of this would indicate that it's a generally neutral sound signature just that the individual you know frequency ranges uh you know they have a number of notable quirks and colorations and unevenness that's that make for a not a very smooth or well-balanced listen overall um, so just too many quirks that need to be ironed out with this one as far as the tonal balance is concerned unless you're specifically looking for a more flavored or esoteric kind of tuning something a little bit closer to a w-shaped kind of sound signature now for me i did try to do some eq with it but that also required some high q cut in the treble like for the areas that I mentioned which I generally don't recommend doing your mileage may vary on that but you know I think the main thing to address would be the 800 to 900 Hertz uh, bump and then just you know do the rest of those treble peaks by ear but with that said I wasn't able to you know get this to a result that I was totally happy with and it was certainly more difficult to EQ this one than other headphones now for the subjective stuff for technical performance the R70X is acceptable or appropriate for its price tag but at the same time, I was kind of hoping that this would be another one of those high value products like their other collabs. And to my ear, it just isn't. Now, at first listen, I thought maybe the mids were decently resolving, but then quickly realized that this was due to the pronounced level there for certain tones. Um, in the mids, you know, somewhere around that 800 to 900 hertz bump, and that's sort of what drew my attention. But it does sound like certain ranges have some potential. In my view, its biggest strength is once again in the treble extension. And it's also reasonably incisive there in the treble, um, you know, up incisive up top. And so I think it's primarily held back there by some of those tonal quirks that I mentioned, you know, above 5K. Uh, still, there's a general, you know, sense of haze, and it's kind of harder to hear the finer little nuances and details in the music with a bit more of a duller presentation overall. And, you know, I think about other closeback headphones around this price, and I would say it's probably on par. Soundstage and imaging wasn't remarkable, uh, you know, it was neither claustrophobic nor particularly spacious, although I've certainly heard worse at much higher price tags, so that's good, I guess. I also didn't really get much sense of punch and impact even if I did get a good seal and so you know I don't think it's really punching above its weight <laughs> as far as the technical performance is concerned. Now for a couple of comparisons here at the moment I imagine the closest uh, competitor to the R70X you know would be something like the AKG K361 or K371 and again I think the hope or expectation here is that this collab would have ended up being you know really good value and be able to compete with those headphones especially given what they've done with the previous headphones like I mentioned and I'm going to say this as a matter of personal taste because I think you have to decide for yourself you know the kind of sound signature that you're looking for whether you're after a more you know reference kind of sound like what you get from those AKGs 
or a more esoteric tuning like the one that you get with the R70X. For me though, there's no scenario where I would choose the R70X over the AKG alternatives. Yes, those ones suffer from build quality issues as well. Um, and they have smaller pads, um, not as you know wide an opening for the pads and not as comfortable for long sessions as these ones. But in my view, from a strict sound quality perspective, they have a much more pleasing tonal balance across the board and just flat out sound better. Additionally, it's also worth considering if it's worth a slight price increase to go up to the uh, Bayer Dynamic DT770, although there's so many revisions of that one at this point that I'll need to get a new one of those in to compare and hopefully I'll be able to do that sometime soon. And so this brings me to my conclusion. Do I recommend the Drop X HiFiMan HER7 DX? Well, it has some strengths. I think the main issue is that unfortunately it's not the high value proposition that myself and many others were probably hoping for. You know, I think the dynamic driver here isn't unique enough to make it stand out from the competition. And so I think you really have to be into a more flavored or esoteric sound signature to be able to appreciate this one. Um, and for me, it's just too close in proximity to other products that truly are extreme value in the budget headphone space. So uh, for that reason, I have a hard time giving this one a, uh, a recommendation. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.